Welcome to Pure Property Investment 101. Today we are joined by Anthony Pears. Anthony is a partner with Integra Financial Services. Um, guys, with the, uh, I guess, the rise and rise of self-managed super funds and uh, purchasing, potentially purchasing property within self-managed super funds, I thought it would be important to talk to someone such as Anthony, who's got a lot of experience in that space, to talk about what are some of the actual restrictions that uh, potential investors need to understand before they go and go through all of the paperwork and the trials and tribulations of setting up a self-managed super fund to therefore buy or potentially buy a property in it because there are a lot of restrictions, a lot of pitfalls that people need to understand. There's also a lot of upsides, but I think key to that is, is understanding the information and having a good partner in that space before you go out and actually invest. So Anthony, if you wouldn't mind sharing with our viewers a little bit more about uh, the potential restrictions in buying property in a self-managed super fund. Thanks, Paul. So what we first need to, to realise with superannuation, and that includes a self-managed super fund, that you've got to meet the sole purpose test. Now, the sole purpose test means that the super fund is there to provide a retirement benefit mm -hmm. and or a death benefit in the event of death. Also, you've got to make sure that your trust deed allows you to do this investment property and mm -hmm. purchase and borrowing. So it may be a case that you have to do an updated trust deed the other main thing is that that property has got to be a total arm's length. So what we mean by that is it cannot be used for any, for any member, trustee or associate mm. for their own personal benefit. That's the major one. Mm. There, is a, there is one area where you can get around that and that's for business real property yes. as well. So the main thing is that it is at arm's length. So you can't use it as a holiday house. <laughs> You can't let your employees use it. Yep. Um, you can't let your friends or relatives, relatives use it either. So when you talk about arm's length and for a property itself, it's got to be on real commercial terms. Mm. So it may be like an investment unit where the management is run by the real estate agent in that, that particular area. Um, the rent goes obviously back to the self-managed super fund. The self-managed super fund pays all the expenses. Mm. The other technical area is that when you purchase a property through that limited recourse borrowing, one of the other major restrictions is that you cannot use any of those borrowed funds to improve the property. Yep. Um, it does get very technical because an improvement, what does a, an improvement constitute? Um, an improvement could be something like replacing a, a, a toilet mm. in a bathroom if a toilet gets broken. Mm. Um, you could argue that's not an improvement, it's just replacing the, 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 the damaged fitting, but for the, uh, for the ATO's point of view, that's an improvement. So there are various restrictions in that sense too. So you have to be very, very careful. Mm. Um, you have to make sure that it does meet with that investment strategy of your self-managed super fund that has to be reviewed annually too. Yeah, okay. So there's a few key parts there, I think, that we discussed in the sense that um, making sure that you, as part of your audit, you do review your investment strategy regularly. I think it also speaks volumes to the, uh, probably really the overarching intention of this property, making sure that you buy the right asset is absolutely key in this nature. Mm -hmm. And I think as hearing a lot of what Anthony's outlined there with certain things you're restricted to be able to do, improve, not improve, et cetera, you can see that it probably therefore, uh, probably it probably would, would put in brackets the certain types of properties which would be the right properties for a self-managed super fund. Um, outside of that, there's obviously different aspects from a business perspective, but that's probably a different kettle of fish altogether, whether you're buying an office to run a business out of, et cetera. Um, but long and short of it, I think it sounds like you really, self-managed super fund investing from a property perspective, don't try to do it to, to find a, a cheeky way to get around the ATO and potentially buy a house that you can live in very, very or cheap or cheap cheaply and, and plan that into your retirement assets as well because they'll get you and they've got more systems in place than we know what to do with so I think ultimately it needs to fit in an objective it needs to be something that is going to be at arm's length like you said and then really the sole in intention of that property is to make money over the duration um, again guys you would have noticed that as part of that discussion that there is a lot more to it and oils ain't oil. So to speak with a, 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 an expert when it comes down to really what you need to know and what are the right investment types, what, what types of funds do you need to get set up in the initial stages, the different structures, it's worthwhile speaking to someone like Anthony. His, his contact details are below, uh, at the bottom of the screen. Um, you can also talk to us about investment types, property types that can go into those uh, self-managed super fund portfolios when that time does come. So you can contact our team at the bottom of the screen as well. Um, and no doubt we'll catch up with you very soon. Cheers.